Hey guys, this is Mike the Wrestling Godsman. Um, this video is actually not for SmackDown tonight. I was gonna watch it, but I I'm really not because I'm kind of interested. Like I said, I love SmackDown, but I think I want to. I think I really kind of want to talk about like kind of funny way of saying. It. I think that it's time for a retrospective video because I feel like this. Like you know what? And I, I'm gonna say I'm actually gonna change the video name. I think it's gonna be a. It's literally about. It's about WWE as a whole because I feel like. Here's my thing. I know I haven't said anything. I haven't really spoke on it about since the firings and everybody seems to be coming back. And WWE is, just, I don't know what's going on. And I feel like they're losing viewers day by day because, I mean, week by week or month by month because of me roster. Because, and this is the thing. SmackDown is great. It's got Chuck full of a lot of talent. And I'm just like, yo, I, I really kind of want to see what they're doing with Drew Gulak. Because that dude shouldn't have came back. That should have that dude should have went to AEW because he's such a good technician and they keep burying that dude and it's the same thing with Matt Riddle because I was gonna talk about the Matt Riddle thing and I'm actually gonna talk about it because you know what the dude gets so many allegations and stuff and I'm like yo the dude's literally haven't even been here for a year yet he hasn't even joined a year and I'm like yo y'all burying the, you're, you're you're bagging this guy because y'all think he's a druggie knowing that y'all hired this dude. Knowing you know his fantastic ability, you hired him, you did whatever you did. And he's got kids. That's the crazy part. Because the thing to me is that I'm just... The thing that kind of pisses me off a little bit is that they don't know what to do. And this is the thing I'm, I get so tired of hearing because it, 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 bog, it boggles me. It boggles me that AEW, do, AEW gets more wrestlers. It bothers me that... NXT does so many wonderful things with their talent, but it also bothers me that the main roster don't do nothing. Because I think I really think WWE is um disconnecting. I really feel like that. I feel like with all the stuff they've been doing lately, with all the crazy matches, with all the gimmick matches, with everything they've been doing, even with, even with SmackDown, and SmackDown felt, and I watched SmackDown last week. I just felt like it was it was unbearable. I'm like, yo, you're literally putting, you literally have a champion, right? You have a champion that's never going to, that's a women's champion that's never going to defend her belt. You got two women's tag team champions that are never going to defend their belts because they think they're better than everybody. You pretty much have them on a heel turn, which everybody hates them. But her record, I'm like, yo, we're so busy with Sasha and Bailey. But the funny thing, what if EO shows up and changes the game 100%? Because I feel like if she shows up, it's gonna we're going to want EO to be champion. We're going to want EO to be champion so bad. And then I'm thinking about the, the Undisputed Era thing. I think them them dudes going to, un, like, literally going to the main roster to, to kind of shake things up would be fine. But I really kind of want to see if they go to Raw. Are they going to take on Drew? Are they going to take the tag team titles from the from the Street Profits and the Viking Ridge? I would love that. I would love that. I would actually love that. Because I miss I miss having certain things. And this is the thing, too, that it's always, and this is the problem that I, I, I consistently deal with with the WWE on a daily basis because it's just, like, the ratings. The ratings, they don't even go to 3.4. They go from 3.4 to 4.0 and to 2.5 because nobody's interested. There hasn't been any new call-ups. There really hasn't been. Like, we haven't seen Bianca Belair. Ever since she made her debut, you haven't seen her. Like, bro, where is she at? And this is what I kind of get mad about because it's like, yo, we literally have to go deal with a lot of people. But in a, in a kind of a retrospect kind of thing is that we're still dealing with a bunch of people. And it's like, well, we've kind of got, the, you know, we've got this massive talent. we kind of got this idea what we're going to do with them. we kind of got this big idea. We're going to put up with something with them. We're going to do something together. No, same thing with Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan isn't bad, but she just doesn't know what she's doing. Same thing with Ruby Riot. She's mad that Ruby, she's mad, she's sad that she doesn't think Liv needs her anymore. She doesn't think that. And I'm just like, yo, maybe it's just time for it. Maybe I should just be a, tri a, two, a duo. That way I don't have to go do this dumbness. Because I feel like it doesn't help. Natalia and, and, and Lana are what? Literally being angry. 
Bobby's literally on a tear, which I'm happy, but that dude's never going to end up being a champion. That's the sad part. MVP's only there because of Bobby Lashley. That dude's been gone for like 14 years, and literally, you won't be a new, the new United States champion. So pretty much, you could have designed, redesigned the belt. That was perfectly fine. Does he get another belt title design? So pretty much, we got a bunch of dudes on Raw that's not really getting a lot of airtime. We got a bunch of dudes from on NXT and 205 freaking killing it, which is Legato Del Fantasma, which they're great, and I want to see them doing the main roster because they're not... They're not like everybody else. They're not. And this is the sad part, though. Like, we have, we don't never see the tag titles. We don't. We never see them. We never seen the tag titles. I was watching e, um, e, ECW. And ECW had them brothers defend them titles every, like, every time there was a match. Every time the one person got beat, another two would go in and try to beat them for the belts. That's what it should have been like. But No. We literally don't get that. Then we get guys who want to run the show and try to make new storylines, but you can't make new storylines. We haven't seen... Literally, we've seen Seven Ray. That's all we've been seeing. And I like that storyline, but I want more. And I, and, I, I, and I don't know what they're doing with Andrade because, like I said, with Andrade, it's like they want to push him, but they don't want to push him. And Angel Garza, they want to push the dude, but they don't want to push him. And then Zelina's there, but they don't want to push him. Alistair Black is there, but they're putting him in a crazy storyline, which is great. And Humberto Carrillo's great, which he should be. And this dude is not ending up to get a, become a champion. And I'm just like, yo. This, should, this dude should have went to SmackDown. He should have went to SmackDown and became Intercontinental Champion. Because he should have just became a champion just to have a, a decent title. Just to give him something. But not. Nah, it's going to be some dumb. It's going to be some dumbness. Because I'm looking at 205. And 205 is developing these dudes and making them better. Because NXT is pushing them a little bit. And I like the fact that we're getting something with them. But to a point, we don't get it. We don't get a lot of stuff with them. We don't. Which is kind of sad. Because... And I'm kind of taking the bits off with, like, Steven Larson. I'm just like, what are we doing? What are we doing with The Fiend? I love The Fiend and Bray stuff because I like it because I, I know that Braun, I mean, the, the Fiend, like, the Braun, he's going back to follow the follow the buzzards, Bray, and I love it. But I just don't see the, where, where is it going? I don't see it. I don't see where it's going. I don't see what they're trying to do. I don't even see what they're trying to pull. And this is the sad part about it because everybody believes that, they, like, that dude... Like they're like they're gonna push him, and what's sad about it is like Braun Strowman is a great dude. Braun Strowman is great, fantastically great. His promo work has gotten a lot better. He's a lot better, and the sad part is, Drew is great, but he's great because you know because Dolph wants a, now John, Dolph wants a shot at the title now. Knowing that Dolph is great, but the dude's never going to... Like, bro. Like, and this is what I was saying before with the WWE. I hate that they treat us like we're marks. They treat us like we don't know what we see. And we've been seeing it for the last 20, 30 years. And that's the sad part. You got a, you got a chairman that's not even running the show. Who's literally getting older by the day. You got the legends, like Stone Cold, Big Show... You got Stone Cold, you got Big Show, you got Mark Henry who retired, but that dude seems to come back every time. And then you got, and the sad part is, you got the New Day, but the New Day are doing well on SmackDown, but they, they're defending them t- the title balls like crazy, but they are never going to become a sing- They are never going to become singles competitors because it's sad. Because how come Big E went to become North America? Um, literally, he became Intercontinental Championship. He became Intercontinental Champion. That's the sad part. He became Intercontinental Champion, but never had a good run on it, though. But sadly, he went to go to Xavier Woods and work with him, and that's the sad part. And Brian said, Daniel Bryan even said that we have so much talent, we don't know what to do with him. That's the sad part. And I love NXT because they, they try to change up the game a little bit, but it doesn't even change. It's sadness. It's literal sadness because you know why it's literal sadness? It's literal sadness because we don't know what we want to do. It's, it's literal sadness that 
We've got to figure what we're going to do. As little as sadden as that, we have to figure it out. We've got to dream it, and we got to dream big. we got to dream big, or we got to dream smart. And we got to dream smart, then we got to dream big. That's the sad part. And that's the real sad part that I, I couldn't even fathom because this is the thing. This is the thing I was saying. Like, look at look at Enzo Amore. Look at that dude who literally got fired for some for some darn scandal. Who literally could have been better at a Cruiserweight Championship one if they knew how to book him. And Miz was right. They didn't know what to do with Enzo and Cass because they were a tag team. But Cass wanted to... Cass wanted to be a heel. Cass wanted to be a big dude, which would have been fine if they knew how to book that dude in NXT. That was the sad part. Look at Simon Gotch. Simon Gotch literally went from being a tag team duo with Aiden English to be the Vaude Villains. And it didn't work. Because Simon Gotch didn't have the flavor that, we, that, he, that Vince wanted. That's the sad part. And I'm sorry I'm bringing them up again, guys. Like I said before, there's a lot of guys in the, in the talent. There's a lot of guys that have talent, but that get misused. That's why I was thinking about this, this entire week. Like, because I'm seeing the wrestle. I'm seeing it. Like, where, where are they going? Where are they going? I got, a, I got another dude. Who's literally the governor of California? Matt Morgan, the blueprint. That dude went from being from literally being on SmackDown, right, in 2005, had a stuttering gimmick, worked with Carlito, was so good at doing his job, but he left. And the sad part was, was that if he would have came back, Matt Morgan would have been something else. He became the blueprint. They do went from being a mega star in TNA for being the govern the governor of Florida, bro. I mean the governor of California, sorry. And it's really kind of sad though. Because the guy who literally was the greatest thing in, in, in professional wrestling in TNA. And everybody talks about how TNA wrestlers don't know. TNA TNA wrestlers didn't die, bro. TNA died as a whole. That's the sad part. TNA died because they tried to get old. They tried to get the dudes that we've seen from Nitro, from WWE, from WCW into TNA. Case in point, Kevin Nash. Case in point, Scott Steiner. Case in point, Booker T. We kept seeing dudes that we shouldn't have seen. And that's the thing. TNA was trying to be WCW in the mid-2005 to 2014 when it finally went under. And when they changed their name from in, from literally TNA to Impact Wrestling, and, we, and the thing, the sad part is, right? Jeff Jarrett brought all these dudes in here, and brought all these dudes from Global Force Wrestling, and, and it ended up being a total failure. And I'm like, yo, we saw Jeff Jarrett as his current inc inc incarnation today. I literally see, this is the thing about TNA, it was great because they were bringing all these factions, and everybody had a faction, everybody was part of a faction, Hulk Hogan had his little faction with Eric, and it was M it was like w w NWO 2000, 2012, 2010, and it was Immortal, which would have worked, the Bully Ray thing would have worked if Bubba wasn't really trying to push himself. See? Then they try to go with these scandals. Then they try to do the same thing with AJ. And AJ was so good. AJ was good because he went and did his thing. And then he ends up going to dealing with Rick. Rick Flair's not a bad dude. He had a freaking squad. He had a freaking fortune called Fortune, which would have worked in WWE if they put the right dudes together. If they put the right dude together, they could have. It could have been Fortune. It could have been Fortune. In WWE, Fortune would have been cool. Ric Flair would have got the hype for it. It would have been a massive pop when I thought about it. What if, right? It, this is the thing. This is why I talk about the WWE and I'm talking about other companies. But this is what I mean, guys. The wrestling business is so so crazy because we have so many wrestlers, but then we don't get them, and then we get the greatest guys. Like, look at look at look at dudes from that like the 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 not the Attitude Era, but look at dudes from the Ruthless Aggression Era. We don't even know where Carlito is. And Carlito's literally... A, that dude went from going into rehab. 
they never pushed the button with him. They never pushed it. They wanted to change it. They wanted to go into it. Attitude Era was good, but that was the problem. Rock was being too much of a star. What happened? We brought Goldberg in. We brought Goldberg in at the end of the freaking, the beginning of the roof, the, the beginning of Rufus Aggression, but to the end of it, though. And the thing is, he could have been, he actually could have made it and been a star if he stayed an extra year. Because I feel like he would have had more time. I figured he probably would have had a, a few with Ray or Eddie or somebody. And that's the sad part. Look at the PG era of WWE. We had PC, the greatest dude that we had. The, the, the dude that was so straight edge, right? Which was CM Punk. The guy who literally was on backstage. Came back for backstage. And we didn't know if that dude was coming back. And we kept wondering when that dude was coming. And he kept bringing up wrestling memorabilia. All his old wrestling memorabilia. Bro, you could have came back and made a killing. That's the sad part, guys, because I look at guys like CM Punk, I look at NXT, and look what NXT did. NXT did the, 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 the impossible, which I think they weren't going to do. They literally took the two greatest guys in the, in the business, which is Adam Cole and Keith Lee. Keith Lee actually is on the top of the mountain being double champion right now. Double champion. And I'm not even mad that that dude's double champion. I'm literally not. I am excited. I thought Adam Cole, I thought it was so close, Adam Cole could have been. And I'm not even mad, bro. This is the thing, man. NXT is not ruining these dudes. These dudes are being built. NXT is a different ballgame than what it was when it was a reality show. When it was a cha physical challenges. It should have been wrestling. It should have been dudes like Target. It should have been dudes who had the speed. That was the sad part. They don't know what to do. AEW knows what to do because they're taking all the wrestlers, taking dudes that got fired and giving them a second chance. Look at Brody Lee. That dude's been that dude's been on freaking AEW and he's been on the tail. AEW. And you had a guy. You had all the formula, the perfect formula with Rowan and Harper. And you could have did something with the Bludgeon Brothers. You could have did something. No. You could have did something with Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan. You could have did something. No. Yeah, I didn't do a thing. Yeah, I literally did not do a thing with him. Yeah, I put him in a dumb, goofy angle. Daniel Bryan comes back and he's at another level of the game and he's becoming a face again. But the thing is, he's dealing with he's dealing with Miz. He's dealing with a bunch of people. He's dealing with AJ. And AJ is great. AJ Styles is great. Most high after, most sought after free agent in the in in, in the wrestling business today. Sought after. And dude could have went to AEW. He could have. He could have been on the Indies and went on AEW and went and been with Kenny. That's the thing about Kenny. Kenny can do anything. Kenny Omega has his mindset and his mindset about these, these matches he has. Same thing with the Revolt. The Revolt, which used to be the Revival, literally left the WWE because they were getting they were getting snubbed. That's the thing. You, you can't snub dudes and expect them to, 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 to keep going. And the Street Profits, which I love... But in reality, but in reality, don't get the shot they're looking for. I feel like they're just disconnecting. I feel like there's not enough. And this is the thing I was saying with WWE. I don't hate them. I just don't like what they're doing. I don't like. I don't like that challenger. I don't like that champions who are champions. People who need a push don't get their push, or getting lackluster pushes. They're booked wrong. Liv Morgan is booked totally wrong. Bob Lashley was booked totally wrong. And that's the, that's the sad part. Ricochet, I'm glad that dude is back, but I should see more of him. He shouldn't have been booked wrong. That's the sad part. I'm a little kind of pissed off about it because the thing is, I really want to have a perfect idea with that dude or a perfect idea of what they're going to do with him, but they don't need That's kind of sad. But anyway, guys, like, comment, subscribe. Peace.